Welcome back. This week we're going to go with a Kelly Gallup triple TNA bunker. Uh, so go ahead and get comfortable. This one's going to take a minute. We've been doing a couple of uh, short nymph patterns that, you know, range in that 8 to 12 minute. We're, we're, we're going to blow that one out of the water today. Um, we got just an absolute mess of material on here. I didn't sort through anything, so it, it's going to take a little bit. Uh, bear with me, and uh, I don't blame you if you tune out early. Just zoom into the last portion of it. So here we go. We're going to start off a little bit off center on this one because we're, like I said, we're doing a triple. But uh, we got the MFC 7050 size six for the back hook. Now you can do this in a couple of different sizes. Um, I'm going to go a 6, a 4, and then a 1. You can go 6, 4, 2, whichever, whichever size combination works for, for the uh, length of streamer you typically fish. So we're starting this off just maybe a little bit past center on this one, a little closer to the back of the hook, and then all this back is going to be is just like um, a little flapper tail or it, it's just going to be palmered marabou and then we're going to we're going to tone it with some color over the top um, you pick the right you pick the right marabou piece you can get away with doing this with one um, if it winds up being a little sparse just add add one more you can you can do it with at the most two is what I would put on here The TNA series for Kelly has probably been one of his most popular um, overall series as far as patterns that he ties consistent, or uh, patterns that have branched off from one another. The TNA series has been just just phenomenal. There's so many different patterns in this one. Yeah, get back here. So, like I was saying, we're just going to palmer this back half. This is going to be our tail, and I keep trapping on every turn here. There we go. Just work this right up to the front, or as far as it'll go to the front. We're going to use two on this one, just to give it a little bit extra. That that plume was a little bit sparse so this is what we're going to work with we'll just add a little bit extra to it now all I'm going to do is just run back over top of this probably to the halfway point of where the tie-in was and I'm not going with any flash in the back the flash is going to come in on the second part of the or the second hook second and third hook of the fly progressing forward So we'll just get some good secure wraps over top of that and we'll pick out another white plume here. Something preferably a little, a little more, with a little bit more bulk. That looks like a pretty good one right there. Looks pretty good. Uh, no. That's not going to work. This is going to be a lot of the video, me sitting here looking at stuff and thinking everything's good and changing my mind, calling audibles, so bear with me. No. <laughs> we'll try again. In hindsight, I probably should have sorted through these. It would have made this video a lot quicker and probably a lot more entertaining for the viewer. But, yeah, this is what you get. You get what you pay for. It's free. Alright, this one will work, I promise. And just trim that off. I had a couple different color combinations in mind. I was a little bit short on uh, marabou, a little bit short on sculpin wool, whatever it may have been. Um, but 
all of that should be alleviated here later in the week. I think we got about twelve to thirteen hundred dollars worth of material coming in for the for the business, so I shouldn't have a shortage of material to pick from and should be seeing a lot more flies coming out for uh get out of there. Should be seeing a lot more flies coming out for sale too. Not that we don't have a bunch already. There we go. So we're just going to run that up palmered right up to the front. Go ahead and tie that off and then I'm going to work this back. Just wet my fingers a little bit, get that marabou out of the way. And I'm going to work this back probably an eighth to a quarter of an inch and just let it sit how it is. Now what I'm going to do with this, uh, with these overwings throughout the, the entirety of the fly is I'm going to use one marabou plume for, for bulk and then I'm going to use a toner. The toner that I'm going to use is just this MFC. This is uh, tan and olive. And I'm going to run that over top of the olive brown marabou. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick out a regular olive brown, something that you would use for a tail, something that's not real bulky. I got a whole ounce of it here, so hopefully I can find something that's going to work relatively quickly. And like I said, for this, if, if I were doing it just one straight color, um, I would probably do. Um, two plumes, maybe three plumes, unless you get something that's just that just really stands out and is really like really gives you that nice color transition that you're looking for. But for this, like I said, doing the olive brown and then the toner on top of it, I'm just going to use one for the olive brown underneath. Go ahead and spin that off and then you can see I'm probably three quarters of the way back maybe between half and three quarters of the way back and then I'm going to take this toner over top oh neighbors are doing something that Knoxville doesn't like now I'm going to take this MFC right over top of this and that's going to cover up that's going to be my bat or my uh, overwing if you will and I'm just going to set that in one two couple of loose wraps go ahead and cinch it down take it right up to your eye and then trim off your excess now you still have a little bit of white coming underneath this um, ideally you would have those just about matching up or whatever it is. This flapper tail moves around so much when this actually sleeks down you, you, you don't see a big difference in bulk between the two. Yeah the white kind of comes out a little bit further but I like doing it this way as opposed to the traditional stacked tails on the back section and it's a little bit quicker too to be honest. So that will do our back hook, the MFC 7050 size 6, and we'll give it a quick whip finish and trim that off. We'll pop this one out. And then we're going to jump into the 7050 size 4. I'm just going to lay a base down. This is just some UTC 140, 170. I can never remember what the hell it is. I think it's 140. 70 is the one below it. So, yeah, it's the 140. And we'll get our articulation wire in here. We'll connect our 4 and 6.
Same as always, I'm going to leave a little bit of excess so I can fold that over. And I'm going to take two beads on this one. Hmm, well, I had the bead set aside. That was one thing that I was efficient on, but I just went and dropped that. So. There's another couple of seconds you gotta listen to me ramble. Anyhow, there's the two beads that we have. I'm gonna take our back section here, our size six. Get off of there. Run these back through the two beads. section that I cut with some dull scissors so hell it must have been that pair Screwed up a good pair of scissors. So now we're going to run this back through our bead, or beads, I should say. It's just not wanting to cooperate. There we go. Should have left myself a little bit more to work with, but that'll work. There we got our connection wire all set. Struggled a little bit more than I should have on that one. And we'll go ahead and throw this in, get that out of our way. Nice thing with the Marabou when you're working with this, it all just leans back over top of it so it doesn't really get in your way too much. You don't have to throw a straw or anything like that when you go to Palmer. Any further Marabou, we're not going to on this one. Some of them I do. Um, but for this one, we're just going to keep this a straight stack portions of marabou from here on out. Go ahead and double those back, get those tied off, and then I'm going to whip finish this 140. Trim that off and then back to the, the GSP. that out of the way. Now, before I tie anything else in material wise, I'm going to go with some, and this is just gold flashaboo, I'm going to go with about three strands of this. And let me just give that a trim. That's way more than what I need. So I'm going to take these three strands, and I'm going to run it about halfway back the, the uh, size six. And it's just going to act like a, a, uh, a very subtle lateral line. And I'm going to take that, like I said, right, right back the size six, I'm going to double this over and I'm going to bring these three on this side. Kind of look over top of it and you can see when I was cutting that I kind of just looked over the top made sure that those lines were coming back the same direction 
and you can see where they're sitting right nice and clean right back that lateral section and then on top of that I'm gonna go with two um, more sparse sections on the white and use these for covers use these for a skirt and when this fly gets wet that uh, those lateral lines are just gonna pop a little bit between the two colors so I'm gonna take peel that back and I'm gonna run this on the lower section probably three quarters of the way back to the point of the hook on that size six I'm just gonna get these secured like I was saying these are staying on the lower end so it's gonna be the lower section of the skirt and then I'm gonna tie this next one in on the camera side and it's just gonna give you a nice cover it's gonna give it you know if, if you skip this if you skip this step you, you can do it but when this fly gets wet or even when it's dry it's just gonna look it, it, it's just gonna look off I don't know if there's a better way that I can put it it's it's gonna look segmented throughout the body so this gives you that nice transition that nice cover that you're looking for um, and it's going to be a seamless transition between each articulation point. Moving on to this next one, I'm just going to find another um, oh, the dog's not happy. I'm going to find another olive brown piece. This is going to go over the top. And I'm just going to lay this over top, probably half the way. Um, we'll go a quarter of the way to half halfway back to the the toner section. This olive and tan, and I'm just going to tie this in. This is just bulk. This is just a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a cover because this is such a big fly, and the dog's really thirsty, so. Knox is still in center stage again. Hey, whenever you're done there, sweetheart. I'm trying to film here. can't get you can't get entertainment like this just anywhere so back to the toner on this one I'm going to cover up what I had with that the olive brown and then I'm going to go into this I'm going to go half to three quarters of the way back the original toner that I put on the size 6 hook and I'm just going to lash this in real quick take this right back to where I left off with everything else and I'm just going to use this for bulk run my thread up to the front call that good and now we're going to tie in some body material on this you can use just about any color you want um, I'm going to go with just the pearl on this one because it's it's going to come through a little bit, especially how I'm going to tie this one in. Um, I'm not going to give the middle hook the bulk that I do on on the front hook. So I'm just going to go basically overwing, underwing on the middle section of this. So I want to go with something that's not going to stand out too much. Like it's not going to give me too much of a... Um, break in color between the two so I'll take this up right in front of the right in front of the eye maybe a sixteenth to an eighth and I'm just gonna let that sit how it is tie that off and then I'm gonna run uh, get back here I'm just gonna run this body 
if I were using a bigger hook, I would stop in the middle section and I would cover this up. I would go, you know, the white underneath, the toner, and the olive brown. But for this one, I have, it's a short enough shank to where I can get away without doing that. So I'm just going to run that all the way up to the front and then I'm going to find some really thick, bulky plumes of marabou to where it's going to cover the majority of that up. And then when I tie in the front hook on this one, some of the front hook on the back portion of that is going to further cover this up. So this is going to be very minimal right here. I will stop on the front hook and I'll explain that further. I will stop and at the halfway point and add some bulk on that. But for this one, I don't really find it necessary. So just so we have a little bit of contrast here. I'm going to lay this white over top, and this could be, I may double this one up depending on how it looks. I'm going to lay this white over top, and I'm going just about halfway back that uh, last plume of marabou that I tied in. And if this is too sparse, I'm going to double this white up. Let's see how it looks. I'm just going to peel that back a little bit and uh, that's kind of right on the border. I'm going to double it up. That looks pretty good. I'm going to double this one up. So now I'm going to flip my vise back around and I'll peel this one out. Now I have a measuring point. At the very minimum, go the same length. Um, I typically get, will go a little bit longer if I double this up. Get that good and secure. Spin your marabou stem and then cut that. It'll get you as close as you, close as you can be to to the bottom. Now, what I really look for on this, when I'm going on the top section, um, I want a really thick olive brown section first. And I want to run this to the quarter point or halfway point on my last plume of marabou. So I want a good bulk or a good bulky piece or a good bulky plume. That looks really good right there, but the, the key is to this is you don't want a real thick stem. Like if you have a stem that you can see up in this portion right here and the stem is visible, don't use that thing. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cut down on the motion of your fly for one. Two, it's going to come apparent when this thing gets wet. So make sure, see how those fibers, they're really dense. They're, it, it's just a really good piece of marabou and these like I was saying they, they have really dense fibers and it's going to prop up this toner that we're going to use on the MFC pat, or the MFC flies the MFC marabou not flies there we go so like I said quarter to half a way up air on the quarter side not halfway. Just get a couple good loose wraps on that and then secure it in. Now the MFC stuff, if you sort through it you're gonna find something that's really good um, or you're gonna find something that's gonna suit what you need here. All of this material is good but you're gonna find something that's gonna suit what you need. You want something that's gonna cover up both sides of this olive brown that's underneath. If I put this one on, I'm going to cover up half of my side and the camera side you can still see this olive brown coming through. So what I'm going to do is find two that are a little bit more on the sparse side and that's a little bit too bulky at the base there so I'm going to take some of this off. There we go. I'm going to throw this on my side 
and then I'm going to throw another one on the camera side. Covering up half of that olive brown at this point. Get that nice and secure. Everything looks good on my side. Get out of there. Everything looks good at this point. And I'm going to take another one and I'm going to throw it on the camera side. like the color. It was a little more on the light olive side than the one that I have on the hook right now, so it's not going to make it. So now same thing, I'm just going to measure this out against the one that I already have down and I'm going to bring it on the opposite side. have a little bit of olive brown shown right through the middle it's not the end of the world because we're gonna do the same thing on the skirt section of this one to where we're gonna bring the skirt over top of this so it's gonna cover up a lot and when this thing does get wet it's just gonna be seamless all the way back and it's gonna make a really clean looking um, transition all the way through this fly. I'm not worried about cleaning any of that marabou up. I'm not worried about any of that. It's not going to affect any articulation whatsoever. I'm just going to go ahead and whip finish. There we go. Now what I'll do on this one I'll take what I should have done on the last one, just feed this right through here. Get this about to the halfway point, or get this to where they're about even, nice and clean. And I'm just going to give that a quick pull. I'm going to take my two beads, go one right over top of the other. Get that out of the vise. Get out of there. Get out of there. Probably should have taken it out of the vise first. Anyhow, there we go right there. So that's all getting set off to the side. We're going to pull this 7050 size one out. And like I said, depending on how big a flies you typically fish in your river system for these triples you can knock this down if you want to you can go with a six six and a four just to cut down on the overall length of the the fly um, for this one we can use some pretty big swim flies out here so um, you could probably even go you know maybe a four two and a one aught depending on how long you want this fly to be back to the gray here just go ahead and lay a good thread base down and you notice when I lay this thread base down I'm leaving a half inch roughly right here to where my my uh, wool head is going to be doing that mainly so I know not to take any material past that and secondly this is the working portion of the fly so when I go portioning out my halves I know thread to thread this is my half not eye of the hook to the back of the hook and this being my half my half is going to be where this thread is and then my my wool is going to cover up the rest of that uh, the rest of that section it's just a proportion thing it looks a lot better doing it this way and it's easier, you don't have to use as long of a piece 
if you're trying to put a piece of marabou in right here as you are as opposed to right there. I know it's only like a quarter of an inch, but it does make a difference in the in the profile of the fly. So I'm gonna get my wire nice and even here. I'm gonna set this down. We'll get this tied in. Now you can see this big loop that I have right here. That's not what I want to work with. These first couple of wraps were nice and loose, so I'm able to to move this wire around. I guess I got a little more heavy-handed than I thought. So I just want to be able to pull that wire forward, and I want about the same distance as these two beads make to be the same distance as I have on that loop. So I can come back just slightly more. If you go getting too far back, it's going to file on itself more so than not. Um, so if you're going to err on this one, err on the short side. But make sure that you're not robbing yourself of any articulation by pulling this so close that uh, you're, you're choking off any of the movement from this articulation. I mean, if, if that's the case, I mean, just tie a single hook fly because it's not going to dance or move how you want it to. So we'll get that tied in. I just have a little bit to work with on this. I'm going to move it off to the side, tie that in, secure it. Same thing, I'm going to bring this off to the side, double back on it, tie it off, secure it, everything's good. And then go ahead and whip finish. We got just a mess falling down here. Try and get that secured in the best I can. That looks all right. Those are standing up a little bit more than I'd like it, but once we get this next section in there, it'll it'll clean itself up pretty good. So now we'll go back to the gel spun. Get that tied in and out of the way. If you want to at this point, you can throw in some more for lateral lines. I'm going to wait until I get next to the eyes before I put the ram's wool in. I'm going to run more lateral lines with the flashaboo there. So all I'm going to do here is the same thing. Is I'm going to find these more sparse sections of marabou. And tie these in. If I can find what I'm after. There we go. Same thing, I'm going to run these for a skirt. Take this right down to the side, probably halfway back the last stacks of marabou. Halfway back the overall length, that is. Just go ahead and get those tied in. We'll trim this off. We'll use the, the top section for bulk. You go using too much for bulk and it really can get too bulky. <laughs> yeah, funny how that works, right? But if we go throwing in four or five stacks of marabou on this one and you run the entire way through, you can wind up having a football back there. And it, especially when you're using the uh, the Estaz, it can really make a pretty significant drop if you stop all of your marabou at the same point. If you are going to use all of this for bulk, stagger it out. Like I stop the one right there, I can move this forward, I'll stop this one right there, and in my halfway point that I mentioned before, which is now right here and where I stopped with my thread, my halfway point to where I'm going to tie in my next marabou stacks is right there. That's my halfway point. So stagger your, your marabou out 
to where I stopped one there, one there, one here, and then one at the very end. Um, it just makes it a little bit cleaner. It makes your Estaz wraps a lot cleaner and a lot easier to work with. Same thing, I'm going to go back to the olive brown here. I'm going to go as sparse as I can because we're throwing a lot of marabou in this last section. I'm going to go as sparse as I can, just nice and clean. Nice straight even tips on this one. I'll show you better once I, once I pull all the webbing and everything off. Get everything there. Nice straight even tips. Everything's nice and clean. And I'm going to run this back, same thing as before, a quarter to halfway back, somewhere in between is preferable. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to butt it right up against where I started tying in my white, stagger this out, grab another section here of your toner marabou. And then now because we chose a light section for that olive brown, we should be able to get away with only doing one on this toner. Spin that around, make sure that it's staying right over the top. There we go. That's a nice clean transition all the way back on that one looks pretty good. This section of marabou is a little bit lighter than what I would like it, but uh, I think we should be able to, to cover that pretty well. So now there's my halfway point. If you're unsure, take a look where you're going to start with your head. Take a look to where everything's tied in and make sure you're at a halfway point. And I want to bring that back a little bit actually. Just the way that it was sitting didn't look quite quite at the midway to me. So we have everything thus far cleaned up. It's running back. We've got nice seamless transitions all the way back between our hooks and everything. We've got the nice section of marabou over top and it's just going to marry one over top of the other all the way back. Now we're going to go back to our pearl estaz. I actually want to tie the other section in it. The materials if you look at this, and I don't know how well the camera will pick this one up, if you look at this, the materials on this are laying back this direction. If you go to the front, and it all, it all depends on how it's packaged, um, this stuff is moving, moving to the front of the hook. This one is moving to the back of the hook. Tie that section in because as you spin it, it's going to lay more flat and it's going to look more true and give you more bulk that you want or more it's it's going to fill out more throughout the entirety of the body so halfway point I went a little bit past it just to throw a half hitch in there but I got my eye on where I want my halfway point to be I'm going to give that three good wraps go one two and that's my halfway just take a look at it make sure there's, there's, once again, I mean, there's where my head is going to start. There's where the tail or the skirt is. I'm going to give it one more wrap. And just make sure that you're in the ballpark. Make sure that that's the halfway point between your head and your, your skirt. I'm going to cut that, get it out of my way, and then I'm going to throw in my other stacks of marabou. I'm going to take most likely just one really thick piece of marabou on this. This would be a great one, but it has, this would be a great plume because it's so nice and thick on the bottom, but it has this really webby section right there, and it's just junk. I mean, you might be able to use that for a palmered section, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's useless. There's a good one right there. This is a great example of what we're going to use. As you progress forward on on any of these flies, whether it's the barely, whether it's the rainbow riffle, whatever it is, anywhere of your stack in marabou, you want to go from your thinnest to the most thick up at the front, and it's just going to give you that bulk 
as it's going through the water. So this is a great one right here. I'm probably only going to need to use one on this just because of the bulk this plume has. Get rid of all of this junk. Don't try and tie this in with everything on it. I've said this before in other videos. Trim this down. Get rid. Only tie in what you're going to be using because if you don't and you don't get your wrap secure around this hook, this marabou is going to fly all over the place on you. Go ahead and get that nice and secure. Make sure that you're running right down the center of your hook get that secure everything's good same thing if you want to on this stagger your tie off points up to the front of your hook like I was saying that one's nice and bulky so I'm gonna leave that one just how it is and then I could pull all of these back like I did with that one and it would look a little bit more sleek but I'll do that for the picture I mean as, as it's sitting on the vise right now it's not going to look the, the prettiest, but once it gets in the water and everything slicks back, it really gives the nice overall appearance that you're after. Um, let's see here. Same thing with this underwing portion or with your, your olive brown section. I'm not getting too bulky on this one. I just want something that's going to prop up my toner wing, but not overtake it. So I'm going to set that quarter to the halfway point, one, two, work that back to where I left off and then stagger your bulk section or your, your transition for your stas. I can still see right here is where I'm going to start my head. That's where I'm going to bring this last section of my toner. Find a good thick section on this as well. This is a pretty good, pretty good plume here. That's a pretty good plume. I'm gonna try and get away with only using the one, the one section, mainly because I'm gonna throw in another stack of marabou. And then I'm going to go from the halfway to the three-quarter point on this. If you're going to err, err on the long side. Same thing, staggering. My tie-off point or my cut-off point. And now, just so I have a reference, I'm going to cover all of my gray thread up with the white. Now I know I don't want material going anywhere past that section. <clears throat> I'm going to go back in <clears throat> go back in, excuse me, I'm going to tie in my stas again. I'm going to half hitch and then bring this body right up to where I left off with my thread. Give it one or two good wraps. Go ahead and stretch that material. One, two. Get my last one. And now I know exactly where the head on this one's going to start. Now, I knew exactly where it was going to start the entire time, but because I kept all of that clear, I knew right where I was going to leave off with my stas. Now I'm going to throw in some my very last stacks of marabou before I start the wool head. Now with this one, before I do the marabou stacks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all of this out of the vise and I'm going to, or not out of the vise, but I'm going to stretch this fly out to where it's going to be the length that it's going to sit normally, okay? What I mean by that is it's, it's not going to be all crinkled up and everything, and it's going to be the full length, so I can see exactly how far I'm going to run my lateral lines down this. I'm going to take probably 
oh, I don't know, we'll go three to five strands on this gold flashaboo. I got a couple of these. I'm working with these out of the pack, so I apologize for this taking me a little bit longer to straighten these out. I'm at the end of this pack. But, uh, I mean, if you stuck with me this long, you're not going to worry about me straightening out a couple pieces of flashaboo. So, I'm going to do this on my side first just so I have a reference, but I'm going to take this. Go ahead and wet those down. That way when you go ahead and tie these, it's not going to be too much of a hassle for you. But I'll show you here once I get this coming through. I'm going to flip this. I'm going to take these lateral lines and it is going to go almost, we're, we're going to take it halfway back. And if you can see this, if you were actually tying a fly, you would be able to see where the flash is. I'm going to go halfway back the last section of flash that I used. And I'm going to cut that off right there. There's that section of flasher boot, and it's the same thing on this side, or on my side, than it is the camera side. So it's halfway back the first section of flash boot that you tied in. So as we stretch this out, there we go right there. Minus, well, my fat fingers are in the way. So there you can see that, and then the other flash boot is kind of buried in there, but when this gets wet, it kind of stands out a little bit. Once again, this is the last time we're going to do these stacks of marabou. This is a long, well, it doesn't really take that long to tie, especially if you're doing production time, because you can do them all in sections, and it really, honestly, does not take that long. It's taken a long time because I'm BSing a lot and fumbling over my fingers and whatever it may be. But this fly doesn't take that long to tie. But because I'm talking and explaining things a little bit more here it's taking a little bit more time same thing as before quarter to the halfway point on this I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off right to where I'm gonna start my right to where I'm gonna start the head on this trim that off Just kind of clean that marabou up slightly and then I'm gonna one more time another thing too if I didn't use this this olive brown for bulk and I just went with straight toners uh, it would cut a little bit of time down but you're gonna lose some bulk on on the actual pattern because you don't have this prop underneath I like having that prop I like having the the toner stand out and and not just fall, not just fold straight back on the fly. So you can do it however you want. If you want to go with just a straight olive brown the entire way back, that's entirely up to you. It'll save you a little bit of time on the pattern. But I like having that prop sitting there, and it just gives you the bulk. That's what the 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 bunker was designed um, to be a water pusher, something that's gonna just give a ton of mo ton it's going to move a ton of water it's going to cause a big disruption in the water so take a little bit extra time tie this how it was designed to be to be fished and that's to move water and to to get a to get attention from from predatory fish I'm going to now take my last section and if this is same thing if this is a good bulky plume of marabou. Once I tie this in here, I give it a look. I kind of step away from the vise a little bit or I sit back from the vise. And if everything looks good, I'm going to leave this one beat with just the one. But if it's too sparse, I'm going to throw a second section in there. And before I really wrench down on that, I'm going to throw a second plume in there just to give me the bulk that I'm after because you don't want to go through this entire process running this fly the entire way through and then have something sink down on you and I can already tell just by looking at it it's going to be too sparse so I'm going to add a second one over top of that 
you've come this far, take the extra couple of couple of seconds that it'll take to throw your last plume in there to really make this fly look how it should. And then I'm going to go just a little bit longer on this section than I did on the last. Just finish this off. Gives me that little bit of extra bulk. Gives me that little bit of extra that I'm looking for to really make this fly fill out. And you can see this is a this is a lot of fly here, and it's it's funny because this fly is being being as big as it is because there's no weight to it. It it's not. A chore to cast it's not something that you're gonna you're gonna throw for a half hour and be done because it's just laborious and that's not the case and the motion that you get out of this if you fish just the regular TNA to where it's just the articulated um, palmered marabou you know how much motion is in that pattern you go throwing this one or you know the bang tail with the the deceiver tail bunker style and uh, you know how much motion is in this thing it's unbelievable what it's able to create so now we're on to the last section of this I promise there's nothing else coming and uh, we're just going to take some rams wool on the bang tail it was the laser dub that we used to create the head we're going to stick with the traditional on this one and we're going to use the uh, the ram's wool now the colors off a little bit on this one but like I said it's a little bit short and if I don't like the way this one looks I'm probably going to call an audible yeah we're going to go with just the straight light olive so probably Nope. Disregard. I couldn't find a color combination. I asked Christy what she thought was best. I should have just listened to her and stayed, stayed with this one. Keep it down over there. That goes for everything in life. <laughs> uh, she's getting cocky now. So, We're going to stick with this one. The color is going to be slightly off from what I would like it. Yeah, that would be a nice little transition on the head here. But Hell, half the folks that started watching this video are long gone right now. They're not even going to see what the hell the head looks like. So I'm going to do the one. And then I'm going to take this right to the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to go again with the, the olive, and I'm just stacking this. I'm not working around dumbbell eyes. I'm not working around, um, you know, lead eyes or anything. So I found that it's best to keep your hook shank clear on this, or to keep your hook clear, and then that way when you go gluing your eyes on you're able to adhere right to the hook and you're not working or you're not worrying about gluing the eyes right to the wool because yes it can work it can be effective oh get on there and it will stick for a time but I found that it'll stick a lot longer especially once I started working with that Sanyo's laser dub I found that it'll stick a lot longer if you're actually getting that glue to the hook and then the glue actually touches you'll have the eye the eye and then the glue will be between the two and it'll they'll actually adhere to themselves as along with the hook so it's a little bit better to do that keep your wool head a little bit more sparse And allow your glue to get 
to the actual metal on the hook. Let me get this. getting there. We're getting there. Like I said, told you it was going to be a minute on this one. I didn't lie to you. Alright. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty happy with the color on this. It'll look a little bit better once I trim it up. So, as always when you're working with this sculpting wool, ram's wool, whatever it may be. Um, just run your bodkin through this. Make everything nice and clean. Um, get rid of any twists and tangles that you may have. And then it's the same thing. We're going to be, we're, we're not trimming a sculpting pattern or a sculpting shape on this head. I'm going to find the front of my hook and I'm just going to run my scissors right through the top just to get me a, a base or a starting point. And then I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to make it rounded on both sides, kind of like Johnny's Kill Whitey. I'm going to round both sections of this and I'm going to allow this to come back. Now, I'll talk further, further to that once I get to that point, but I'm going to hold off on that for a second. I'm just going to worry about trimming this up. And like I said, we're just making this nice nice and rounded on both ends. We're not coming by and just clipping this straight at the bottom like we would with a, you know, a, a, a silk kitty or um, a boogeyman or anything like that. We're keeping everything nice and rounded and just working right through this. And I'm going to spare you guys. You can get the gist of what I'm doing here. I'm going to spare you guys a little bit of time on this. I'll finish up the final trimmings on this. And then, like I was saying, with the, the metal portion of this hook, I can still take this and flip it off to the side. I can take and separate these my my white and my olive and I can still find the the hook on this for when I go putting my eyes on the last portion or the last step on this fly and if we're not close to an hour I don't know what fly will be I can take this last portion separate everything and then I can actually find and put my glue right there in the center. I can take my eyes, just set them in, take my scissors, go right over top of this. Ideally, these are seven millimeter eyes. I would like to have um, eight. Shoot, you could probably even get away with 10 millimeter eyes on this one, to be quite honest with you. I mean, it's a pretty good, pretty good fit, but uh, you could get away with going bigger on this for sure. Same thing on my side. I'm going to go ahead and glue this in. Get my little dab of glue. I'm going to separate the two sections. I'm going to get this set in. And now I'm just going to take my fingers here and I'm going to press the two together. Hopefully not catch my finger at all. I'm going to press the two together and you'll feel it heat up a little bit. Hopefully you don't have any glue on your fingers. You're going to wind up peeling this thing away. And it's going to be on your finger and not the, not the hook. But you'll actually feel it heat up. Don't get excessive on your glue. You'll feel this heat up and the two are just going to pinch right down to one another. And there's glue actually touching in between these eyes at this point. And then, like I said, I'm going to finish trimming this up. It'll look better once the, you know, the camera 
or once the picture is taken and everything. But there is the very long version of Kelly Gallup's triple TNA bunker. Um, you guys go ahead and tie a couple of these up, take them out to the river and swim them. Um, you know, just like any of the bunkers, if you fish those before, those things are just pure water pushers and they have so much motion to them and everything. But um, if you guys have any questions or comments, as always on this, leave them with me and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. I need to go to the restroom. I need a beer because that was a long damn pattern. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next fly.